Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilman with the FX Market Insight for Monday, the 11th of Feb. All right, not a lot of data out on Friday, so we didn't see too much movement. The, uh, the Aussie uh, starting to stall down here around sort of 70, 80, 71 cents, and the same with the Kiwi. Now, they still are in a downward movement uh, besides this sort of current sideways activity, so I don't get, uh, think that's over yet. Uh, Dolly Ann really sort of banging away sideways in between trend lines and the cloud. Uh, you got a really gorgeous shape here on Euro. It's, it's just slowly edging lower. And this is more of a sign of a, a massive structural um, setup. Right? It's not like not a hit and miss. It's, this is slowly in there. It's going lower. And that's the way things are. So that looks really good. Now, Brexit, we've got uh, random moves here. You get the random 100 and 150 point move here and there. Um, still Brexit. I mean, the shine has run off uh, the, the UK Parliament issues and discussions and debates, all the, all the crap they've gone through. Sterling's starting to wedge lower. Now, it could go, as I said, if they get a good Brexit outcome, back up to 135, 140. They get a bad one, it's probably back down to 120. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Now, Dollar CAD, we did have uh, some major movement here. And this is the major uh, release for Friday. We have the employment numbers. Now, if I can just move out of the way there. I've got oil overlaid here. Um, if I just go back actually in here, I'll just delete that for a second. The, um, now what you've got is a situation here where uh, dollar CAD spiked to the downside straight after the employment numbers. And then it's, uh, I mean, this is all about the retracement, a hell of a retracement from 132.30 back up to 133 and then drifted lower. And now you can see once the market's happy with the numbers and it's fully factored in, it starts to trade sideways. So you can see this opportunity has now finished. And if I just come back over here to show you the numbers, I'll just explain to those that missed it what actually happened. So the employment numbers. Okay, so first of all, let me just uh, change the color of that pen so you can see it. Okay, so the employment change is the first number they hit. Now this number here, uh, plus 66.8 thousand. The expectation was for 8 thousand. So that's a massive positive for Canada or the Canadian dollar. And that's why the US dollar just shot to the downside. The revision from the previous month was hardly noticeable. Minus 1.3 um, was the revised number. So no, no, no major difference. Now, the second thing the traders trade is the unemployment rate. Now there's a slight blowout by 0.1%. It's enough to slow it down, right? But uh, full-time employment and uh, part-time were, were higher than previously, but in saying that, you get this, the devil is in the detail. So you look at the um, last month's uh, full-time employment, minus 18.9. So a 30.9 against that looks quite amazing, right? So it's like a, almost a 60,000, uh, well, 50, 50-odd 50 thousand, 52,000, you know, difference. But the revision for that last number was minus 6.6, .6, which takes a bit of the gloss off, still overriding a good number. So what we had is the overriding really good number, that's the, that's the initial shoot down. And these other factors were just taking a little bit of shine off the numbers. And that's why Dollar CAD came back the way it did. So understanding how the releases come out is one thing. Understanding liquidity constraints is another. Like that big move down here is partly due to the fact that there was less liquidity in the market at the time of the release. So you always get an, an initial retracement, which was back to 132.80, okay, following the, uh, the dip down to one or end of the 20s. Um, and now we're sort of just trading sideways as we go forward. So that's still a cat. It's, uh, I mean, this puppy here is an interesting one, right? So now I overlay oil on it. We start to see exactly what's going on here now. Oil had its big run from 40 bucks up to 55. It's back at 52. And uh, dollar CAD, I can tell you, it runs very closely with oil. Now that those employment numbers are, are in the market, oil is back um, probably in the, in the driving seat and it is sort of falling again. So that should see potentially dollar CAD drift back to the top side above 133. We'll have to see how that plays out. But all you can do on Monday, I mean, there's not much going on. There's a few weird things going on. Let me just uh, show you that as well. But you know what? We've got a new high here after that release. If anything, you're just resetting your uh, resistance level on the top side, 133.15. It's back in the middle of the range and trading sideways for my liking, okay? I'll show you that in the MyFX Trading Hub in a second. Now, one pair that uh, was a little bit uh, crazy 
Uh, where are we? If I can just get the Swiss up. Well, went the wrong one. Yeah, there it is. Well, it's all right. There's my scuba diving shot. Okay, now let me just come across there. I've just been contacting a few um, brokers and the like, trying to work out what's going on with Dollar Swiss now. If you're looking at your trade stations, you should see a massive spike here. Now, this looks like a, a pricing error on the brokerage platforms, and it goes through, like, you know, I know all brokers say I've got, you know, my liquidity is the best and this, that, and that. They, they get their liquidity from the same sources, which is the, the banks, right? And then it goes through aggregators and they basically spread out the risk across all the brokers. Now, there's a massive spike here in um, dollar Swiss, well over 100 points. So we're just trying to work out what that is. I can't see any uh, data or anything else of that like. So it does look like a, a brokerage error. So just be aware as you go forward that there is some weird stuff happening there on dollar Swiss. So when we come back to uh, looking at the major pairs, if I just flick back for a second. Okay, you're coming back to the major currencies and we're trying to work out where the next sort of best trade is. And it's, this is the starting point, right? You've got, uh, you know, the major pairs, that some of them do have a, a bit of direction. Um, Aussie, let me just get that pen a little bit wide, sorry. Aussie, Kiwi, uh, dolly N sideways, Euro definitely is downwards. To me, with, with all the Brexit stuff, UK is sideways, which means it could go up or down. And now that up move in dollar cat has been diffused and I think it's just going to trade sideways. So that's the uh, extent of what we've got in front of us at the moment. Now, if you come back over here, let me just bring you back to the dollar index itself and just show you where the, what the dollar is doing. You'd expect it to be a mirror image of uh, Euro and that's exactly what we've got at this point. The, um, it is slowly cruising to the top side. Euro's, you know, 58.7% of the basket. So of course it's going to add some sort of weighting to that top side. Uh, to me, it's a matter of uh, just keep an eye on your technicals and get rid of the stuff that doesn't matter. Now, this is the same for uh, the dollar yuan. This is going to come right into play very quickly, dollar China or the offshore yuan. Uh, you, you can expect US China uh, to really kick into gear once these trade talks start. I think they're in, they could be even in March, but we're looking at the um, support and resistance lines now. Like dollar... China is moving a bit all over the place. It's now sort of stalling as it gets up towards 6.8. But uh, we'll have to wait for more news to see what's going on there. Equity markets, uh, once again, pretty flat. No major data. We're still missing a huge amount of uh, US fundamentals. Um, so there's no major movements on the equity markets. But what we do have coming up is uh, some huge um, uh, events for this week. But before I get into that, let's just have a quick look at the news that's going around the place. Um, just when you thought it was safe to come out. So that US, uh, the talks collapse on board deal has shut down looms. Don't forget that US government reopening was, was a three week venture. Uh, Trump's still trying to get his wall across, um, built down there along Mexico on the Mexican border. So I don't know what the hell he's up to, but it's there's some other motive, motive there you're going to expect. But if the government shuts down again, we're going to have another lack of US numbers. That doesn't mean trading is, is terrible. It, it's awesome when we have US dollar direction, but there's enough things going on in Australia, New Zealand, uh, UK, uh, Europe, uh, and Canada for that matter, to really give us opportunities, even with a neutral US dollar. So it's less of a, a bad situation for us. Um, you know, they're sort of just waffling on here. Dollar, dollar basically goes up because euro is going down. That's pretty much the, the way of it. Uh, sterling, Brexit, Usually dollar cad would be something to do with oil, although the, uh, the week of the strong employment numbers were a really good sign there. All right, so let's just come back across here just to wrap up. I mean, this is a pretty um, relaxed session, as you can tell, because we do have a Japanese holiday today. When Japan is on holidays, the Asian session, okay, is really, um, you know, really quiet. And that's, what, that's what we're experiencing at the moment. Trading conditions at the moment, well, to me, they're pretty good. You know, we're not seeing this wild, sporadic um, geopolitical crap hitting the market just yet. So trading at the moment is pretty good. Just be aware, I mean, we do have that glitch on dollar Swiss that, that should be answered or corrected, hopefully, um, by the time Europe opens up. We do have the Swiss CPI. Now, this is another you can trade right through, hold positions, whatever you like. But just be aware it's coming out. And if there is significant variance in the Swiss CPI, even though it's not, you know, materially a massive release historically, 
it can has has does have the ability to really blow things out. Um, major currency pair outlook. Well, the US dollar is still edging higher, and that's probably primarily whilst euro keeps going lower. That'll be the case. Now, to me, dollar CAD has changed from a mildly bullish to just basically a sideways move, movement at this point. Um, and the pairs to really sort of keep an eye on, Aussie and Kiwi, they are sort of still heading lower. And that's more around, um, you know, central bank comments around interest rates potentially coming off. So when you're looking at that, you're like, well, okay, so Aussie and Kiwi got downward direction. What do I need to look for? Well, you need to look for Aussie and Kiwi data in particular, because this will give us the answers that we're looking for. Now, for Aussie home loans, the housing market in Australia is under a huge amount of pressure at the moment. It hasn't buckled yet, but it, it could very well buckle. Weak home loans will, will show us how much pain is in the market. So that's a, a really good release for uh, the Aussie dollar. It's actually on the 12th. The calendar is still playing up on the Aussie numbers. Then we have the RBNZ as well. Now, the Kiwi economy is very small. The employment numbers were weaker than expected. You've got to expect them to be on hold or even looking towards a cut to keep that uh, economic growth going in New Zealand. And then as we come through the rest of the week, now's a good time to start planning out the rest of your trading activity or potential opportunities. And this is where you, you come back into, once again, we've got UK CPI. Now it's a bit of a concern with Brexit, obviously, but this is the big number that the, um, the Bank of England look at. And, and that's what the Bank of England are gonna do. They're gonna manage two things, the economy, as well as the potential Brexit outcome. Now they've got no um, control over Brexit, but they can control monetary policy. Now, inflation in, in the UK has been very strong. If that continues higher, man, this is gonna get really tough for the Bank of England to manage, especially if they get a good Brexit deal. If they get a good Brexit deal, I would expect interest rates in the UK to go up by probably a full percent over the next 12 months. You know, just because it's, it's gotta try and slow it down. And all that uh, negative sort of publicity around Brexit, if they get a good deal, it'll all turn to positive, Consumer confidence, business confidence, everything else will go through the roof. That's where the big issue for the Bank of England is going to be. US CPI, now hopefully that comes out. Um, but as you come into um, getting into Thursday, we've got a number of really good opportunities here. Now, some of these are blue, which, you know, which means they're not massively impacting, right? And you can hold positions through these opportunities. German prelim GDP, then you've got the flash estimate um, GDP out of, out of the Eurozone itself. We've got good direction in Europe, right? So this is where you're looking at these opportunities going, I wish they were today, but they're not. They're later in the week. We've got to wait for them to come out. Uh, because we've got the direction in Euro, we get weak numbers here, mate, I'm loading up into the Euro, even when it, as it goes off, because it should just continue lower. And then we've got the uh, US PPI numbers, uh, retail sales due at the same time. We'll see if that eventuates. And then we're gonna wait all week to get into um, some Canadian manufacturing sales. And this is a potential high impacting number. Um, so just keep an eye on that. Once again, if that goes with the employment numbers, well, you've got to expect dollar CAD to move back down the downside. It is moving sideways at this point. So we'll see how that goes. And down here near the end of the week, we do have Chinese CPI numbers. Man, it's, it's gonna be great to see how, how uh, China's being impacted by the US tariffs. Now, this is gonna be a big number. Expect Aussie and Kiwi to be uh, impacted by this release, but, but mainly the dollar yuan, right? So as you come down through, now that's, that's not all the releases, there's a few more on the back end of that, but that's the start of it, right? So as you plan your week and your day's trading, you can actually sort of work out which pairs you're gonna hit and which ones uh, and what days they are gonna be significantly in play. Okay, Euro, Aussie and Kiwi, these pairs all have pretty good direction. Um, with some of the other ones, they've got uh, US dollar index and dollar Swiss still edging higher. So keep an eye on those two as well. And that's pretty much it, guys. There's, um, it's, as I said, it's a Japanese holiday today in, uh, uh, in Asia. So Asian trading, I should say, will be very quiet. Don't expect a hell of a lot. It's, uh, it's a good day to plan out your, uh, you know, your trading for the week, where the potential opportunities are, as I said. And try and follow what's going on. Connect the fundamentals with the technicals. All right. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you in the 247 trade zone. There's uh, plenty of activity coming in as traders get signed up. So don't forget to uh, log in there. And, you know, if you've got a question, this is the place to add it. All right, guys. Have a good one. We'll catch you later on. Cheerio.